Many comments on that. There's a, a mouthful. I, yeah, I've got a, a question on your 10 year, your 100 year tender exam. That being the water I give is injured in some fashion in priority. So, but when that water is not a priority in the junior, I mean, it's called a senior to that. Aren't you actually injuring the water right to not change because you can't do the full so again, back on my example of, of a junior water right. Okay, we're starting with a change, 10 acre feet of consumption abuse, or it's just it's 100 year period. And we let's say we reduce that, or we don't, based on 10 years of non use at the end. But the question is that junior that developed, junior to the right we're changing, developed during the period when it was not being converted. And I did you state again the question on that? Well, my, my question is before that water right was developed, that changed water right goes up at this level. When you have that 10 year period, it goes down to this level, and that level only occurs at the time when that water right is in priority. So, why can't the water right just be in change if we're at the higher level? Prior to, I mean, the call is senior to that junior right, and at the lower level, when it comes to junior to that lower right. So the question is, in in the scenario I described, where the consumptive use is reduced by that ten percent to this level, why can that senior not, when it's in priority, because it's it's going to be in priority over that junior, why can it not divert at that hundred percent level, and and I think the question you're asking is, or the answer to your question is, oh, we quantify it. We we set a maximum through our change process. So it, it is now down permanently. That was that risk of requalification that it ran. So it is now down permanently at that 90% level. Does that answer your question? Well, it does. Because my question is, aren't you, by doing that policy of making that, whenever that senior water right is diverting, be limited by that 10 year period because of the impact of that 10 year period, you're, act, you're actually injuring that water right that got changed. You, you got it damaged. Right. And, and so I think you got back to that point and it sort of it starts to get out in that nebulous policy wording again. What the world, sorry. Um, what is injured? What is enlargement? How do we want to handle that? Do we want to reduce the water right because of those 10 years of non use at the end? And so, agree if if we're improperly reducing that water right with that reduction, sorry, with that figuring in of those zeros, take a look at that as injured. You, you just impacted my property right. So, I think that's your point. Good. Okay, thanks. Any other questions on representative study period? Yes. So the question is, I, I again focused on this period at the end of the water its history, history of use. But what about that period at the beginning when data may not be available, records may not be available? Is that basically the question? Right. And earlier when I spoke about a starting point, I said potentially that entire period from the date of appropriation through the date of the applications is at least subject to consideration. And the one point I made is if their diversion records are not available, that, that would be a reason to not include here. And you know, I, I know we've had cases and I'm looking at you know Steve and Julie and Dave and Dean, and there are situations where we go way back and diversion records may only be solid beginning in 1929, even though the water right was appropriated in 1911. And so I, I think we have a good understanding that that's just a matter of trying to go back and find our data and may not be there. So we're, we're not so concerned about 
leaving those years off at the beginning with the best understanding that was just not really available. Jen. Thank you. 